Hey, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be in assembling the Molosi RC194CC motor. Um, I'm going to walk you through steps I'm going to take to put that together and uh, yeah, it should be a good day. Uh, so let's get right into it. Now for specialty tools, you'll probably only need basic hand tools, heat gun, and a crank puller. Step one, disassemble the crankcase and prepare for warming it up. Now I want to heat up the bearing surface area here to their recommended 130 or 140 degrees. They say use a hairdryer. I'm going to use a heat gun, but it shouldn't really make any difference. So the audio got nuked on this next part, but uh, showing in the picture, uh, you're using the roller bearing um, goes in on the flywheel side and the lip goes in. You can see in the picture, if you look at one side, it's flat. The other side has a lip. That lip side is to go in towards the crank. So here are the cases warmed up. The bearing is just out of the fridge and I'm going to drop it inside. And just a couple taps, it kind of went in a little crooked and dropped right in. And I have the welding on glove on because it's hot. And this is just warming up the other side, showing the uh, temperature with the uh, temperature per setting on my multimeter this one didn't go as smoothly uh, the bearing went in and got a little crooked so I ended up having to take it over to my arbor press tried tap giving it a little tap there with a the mallet to see if it had just dropped but by then it had heat transferred too much and didn't want to go so I just did it with the arbor press so next up is installing the crank uh, the Molosi uses this uh, roller bearing on the variator side for ease of install for one you can slip the whole crankcase together once it's assembled and for load this can take probably way more load than a typical ball roller bearing so for installation for this we're going to heat this up slide it onto the crankshaft in this orientation the shoulder in and then we are going to, the crank is cooled already. I will lightly warm up this bearing, taking care not to melt the plastic uh, cage and uh, push this onto the crank. So first things first, I'm gonna drop the collar on. Uh, fortunately, my camera stopped recording for a second, but the crank was cold. Um, it's now a bit too hot, so I'll have to re-put it in the freezer. But uh, you can see here, it didn't go all the way on. It actually went sideways and I warmed this up. And as soon as it got on there, this cooled down and it locked on. So in that situation, what you're gonna need to do, you can't really hit the crank. So you need to get a piece of something that you can put in between the crank, put it in a press and slide that down or tap it down because if you put this against something here and hit on this end you're going to throw the crank all out of balance uh, super easy to take a crank out of balance um, so there's that so uh, let's uh, run through what I do in this situation where you have no choice but to push on the crank but you don't want to ob obviously knock the crank out of balance so for me, I have a bunch of old parallels that I can use for this kind of scenario. I actually just put them in on a slight angle like this. And then you can push on the side without having to worry about uh, actually pushing on the crank itself. Uh, if you didn't have some old parallels or some type of old two pieces of flat stock, you could take a piece of plate cut a notch out of the center of it here and then slide it in 
but you want to cut the notch big enough so that it can go over the big end of the bearing or big end of the rod so you get it a little bit more flattened in there but in my case I'm just going to use parallels so the other thing you got to be mindful of is when you're pushing you don't want the rod sitting on your material so in my case I'm going to do a little build up with some more parallels but any kind of same gauge steel will work your rod should be floating if it's not then reassess if you're pushing on it you're going to bend your rod so make sure that your rod can float and that you give a little bit enough clearance there which mine's pretty good it's like an eighth of an inch that it's when you do push this is going to deflect you're not going to end up pushing on your rod so just keep be aware of that as well and again i have fancy parallels but you can pretty much do this with anything, just some old steel, probably even wood. The next thing you need is a piece of tube that will slide over and not touch this or hit the shoulder when you're pushing. So I just have this piece of pipe, so I'm just going to cut off about that much of it. So you can see. I have enough gap there when I push I'm not gonna shoulder this out and accidentally start pushing on the end of this so that'll work great if you didn't have a piece of pipe you could do the same thing with a drift and kind of go around but I mean if you have a press and everything to push square and straight I would just do that So even with a little bit of pressure on there, I'm just checking to make sure I'm not pushing on the rod. There we go. That's it. You're done. So it's kind of good that that didn't go as smoothly as planned because that's a situation you can get into pretty easily. That kind of shows you how to work around it if, it if it does happen. Again, you don't want to tap that down just having it sitting on something. You will throw the crank out of balance. So just keep that in mind. So with that on there, uh, now it's time to uh, put this back in the freezer, cool this side down, and sl slide it into the other half. But, of course, if you had freezing spray, you could use that too. You could also just spray freezing spray on the journal and slide it in. But I just have a freezer, so we'll cue to cut out to that. So next up, I'm going to heat the inner race up just lightly. Um, plastic inner cage on this, so you don't want to heat it up too much. You can easily melt that. Just get a nice little warm to it, just warm to the touch, so that when you slip the two halves together, it uh, slips in like nothing. So that's warm to the touch. So now we grab the crank. Just came back out of the freezer. Quite cold. Set it this way. Make sure your rod is facing towards the cylinder opening. So that slid in. So let's say you push this in and it doesn't go all the way. You can look inside and there's a little bit of a gap or you can see it's not pulled all the way through. You need a crank puller. Um, so you would thread this onto the end of the crank. If you try, if you stack up a bunch of stuff here and just put the nut on, you can pull the crank in, but you also stand a chance of really messing up the threads here uh, when you do that. I mean, it does work, but you just have to be very careful. Um, 
but it can, that can work in a pinch as well. A crank puller is a much better option. So you'd put standoffs pushing off on the case here and you would wind this on so that it just engages the threads. And then once it's engaged on the threads, you simply wind this back out and that pushes on the two case or that pulls the crank up into the case half. So I've noticed on the Melosi they don't actually have um, any standoffs to use a case puller. Um, normally on the OEM Piaggio ones they have two bolt holes that are threaded in that are perfect for this. So I assume they want you to use this on a press whenever you take it apart. You would take the case half over to a press and push the crank out. Um, and as far as case splitting you don't necessarily need one because it has the, the uh, roller bearing on the other side, the needle roller. So uh, just while I have everything apart and everything is assembled, the crank is almost in. Um, kind of want to just take a little dab of two-stroke oil and put it in on all the rollers. And I like to drip some in onto the big end rod bearing. And thrust washers just for those initial kicks when you're trying to start it um, just this way then it has some lubrication uh, otherwise it will be dry until fuel gets down there to start so it's just easier this way you can just drip some in so next up is assembly of the case halves you want to make sure there's no burrs raised up on the flat surfaces if you either any you may have put on there or any that were there previously uh, so just check and make sure you don't have any burrs sharp edges anything of that sort free of grease and oil so your gasket material or gasket uh, adhesive will stick decently this is my gasket maker it's uh, you can't really read the label anymore but it's Three bond one one eight four. I believe it is Yamaha bond. Uh, you can get it at a Yamaha dealer, but Kawasaki, Suzuki, or Honda all make a similar product. So just do a light coat on all the surfaces. You don't have to go crazy with this stuff. Just a light, light coat. So Melosi has a pretty neat design uh, because they use this needle roller on the variator side you can actually almost push the case halves together without a puller and i mean there's no actual resistance on the inner from the inner race to the outer bearing there and that's what when you use a puller on a regular two-stroke crank that's what you're trying to alleviate you're just trying to pull from this side but because the crank isn't actually dragging on the bearing because it's a, a lit like a slip fit inside of there um yeah the case halves go together pretty easily you can i mean in theory you could even take a dead blow and just lightly tap if it's not fully seated on the other side and you wouldn't actually put any strain on the lower case half like you would if you were doing it on a regular two stroke with a, with an interference fit bearing on both sides so it's a pretty interesting design and i, I guess in theory as well you could also take this apart um without having to use a puller um i mean you may have to tap lightly on the case halves but once you got it free of the dowels it would pull itself apart and again there's no nothing retaining this in there it just slides in so uh it's a pretty pretty sweet design i wish more two strokes used a setup like that i mean as long as that bearing lasts and all that this is the first i've seen of a setup like this
As a side note actually, for that matter, you could actually almost use the case bolts to cinch this down as well. If you just went in like a light pattern and did equal turns on every one of them all the way around. Um, again, because the crank isn't actually affixed to the bearing on the other side. So again, pretty interesting design. I mean, you can use a puller too, but mine pretty much slid together, which was sweet. So yeah. At this point, you kind of want to check and make sure that it does roll freely. Uh, if it doesn't, you may have a misalignment issue or a bearing may not be seated. Next up, you can install your case bolts. Uh, these are to be torqued to 12 Newton meters. They are all the same length, so you don't have to worry about that. We're just going to wind them in with this, not torquing them, but just so I don't have to do as much work. And the case halves are already together, so I'm not like going around pinching it. So now we're just going to torque these down. Uh, so 12 Newton meters is about nine foot pounds for you foot pound folk. Again, cross pattern. Make sure that you do the opposing bolts and work your way around. And just because I like to check once I get everything torqued, I re go around and check them all. Again, same cross pattern. And you want to check and make sure with that torque that didn't affect anything. Crank still springs nice and free. And it does. So I think we're good to go there. Next up, installing the seals. Um, pretty straightforward. I uh, just like to get like a piece of tubing or something. You can use sockets sometimes that they're really, really deep. And you just want to grab some lubricant, lubricate the inside of the seal. I have rubber grease that I use for these um, and just drive them in. So it's the most important to lubricate the inner lip. Most of the times I've had seals fail on installation or fail shortly after installation is probably because I didn't lubricate them enough and they get hung up and get a little tear in them or uh, rip themselves apart because they're dry. So you just want to lubricate them. They just go in much nicer. And if you have a moderately strong finger, you can usually push them in without even using anything. Uh, I like that method better than most just because if you start striking them, you can slip the hammer or something and easily wreck your seal. Now you don't want to push the seal in too far. There's a light chamfer going into the bore and you basically want the bottom of your seal to be just sitting on the edge of that inside edge of that chamfer so it'll be a little bit recessed but not much like probably less than a millimeter kind of thing you obviously don't want to push it in too far and the same thing for the other side a little bit of grease It's kind of like installing a bearing, you want it to go in straight. If you go in crooked, you can wad up the rubber on the outer edge, so. So that one's not going in as easy. I might have to use like a piece of tubing or something. It just so happens I have a piece 
right here. So just note, I'm hanging the crank over the edge of the table so it's not sitting on the crank when I tap on it. That would be bad. Same deal. We just want it to be recessed in a little bit. Again, there's a little bit of a chamfer there on the edge and basically this top of the seal starts at the bottom edge of the chamfer. So since we have the crankcase open, I'd like to seal it up. So next up, I think we're gonna install the cylinder and the reed valve. So these reed valves use like a rubber on them so you don't actually have to put any gasket maker on the surfaces there, although you can. Uh, I think I'm gonna put like a little dab of three bond on there just to help, especially in the corners where the two case halves come together. It's always a good idea to just put a little dab there on those lines to help seal. So if I'm gonna do that, I may as well do them all. Next up is to assemble the, the 360 degree intake. Uh, I've done one of these before. Uh, if you put it in some boiling water, it makes it really soft, so you can actually slip it in. Also use a heat gun if you want. Warming it up definitely helps a bit. They say not to use a screwdriver or anything that you could poke, so you just kind of have to struggle. I suppose you could use like a plastic pry tool or something, but... So there's the trick. Fold, get one side started, fold the two halves together, roll it forward pop it through and to get it oriented there's seam lines which kind of indicate vertical so if you want it facing exactly forwards or exactly backwards just get your seam lines facing in whatever direction so install your cover put your intake and bolts with washers should be supplied in the kit and the torque spec for these is uh, 10 to 11 Newton meters. This is around, I guess, eight foot pounds or so. Now, if you're using a vacuum fuel pump, you would have to drill out that hole there and then install one of these adapters facing sideways or upwards. If you face it down, you're gonna have a problem with your cylinder, so. Just keep that in mind but it is a sealed hole so you will have to drill it if you don't drill it you're not going to be able to get your fuel pump to work I don't actually need it so I'm not going to install it so next up is the cylinder kit uh, first things first install your ring first thing I have to do is just get a little bit of two-stroke oil on the all surfaces of the ring then find your pin in the piston top. Take the piston ring, put the edge of it in that gap starting there. Put it on the top of the piston like such. And then take your thumb and just roll it around the top of the piston. Pushing the ring in as you go around. And that's it. And arrow points towards the exhaust unless you're 90 GTV from 49 CC forums in which case then you're wrong two stroke oil lubricate your inner surfaces of your rod take your bearing same just dip it in the oil get a little bit on it slide it in take your piston pin same deal a little bit of oil on it also a little bit in the bores on the piston. What I like to do before I put the piston pin in is start one of the ring clips. So if I'm pushing it in this way, I put the one in on the opposite side and the gap always goes either 12 o'clock or six o'clock. I almost always do them at six o'clock. When I like to do circlips, I usually try and do them without tools, uh, just so I don't over tweak them and make them get too far out of shape. I find that if I just push them in with my fingernails, 
uh, you're less likely to kind of jam them up in a way that is going to result in you damaging the ring and then having or the clip and then having the clip fly out while the motor is running. Start your pin, just get it in just enough that it's kind of protruding a little bit, and then you can go down onto the bearing, just kind of rock it gently, push it all the way in, and you want to do your other clip. It's usually a bit easier now that you have the the pin in there because you can push it up against something you don't have to worry about pushing it in too far so install the studs just finger tight lay your base gasket on again you're gonna don't I put it I would, I would three bond it normally um, but since I'm gonna have to check the squish anyway we'll just leave it I put the thickest one on and install your cylinder so the way i like to do it is make sure your gaps are lined up on the pin my in my case the pin is right here and then you can squeeze the sides and get your hand in on the both this the transfer ports on the side so that's what i do is i take the ring i compress it with my fingers then you can slide the cylinder on like this but before you do that make sure you put a little bit of oil on the inside of the cylinder so just grabbing both the sides squeezing in cylinder on now it gives you these nuts and then you should be able to roll it over by hand and even get base compression when going down which is a good sign it means all your seals are at least somewhat sealing goes on just like so two holes at the bottom closest to the exhaust supply bag of screws for the head insert and the cover so this is where we're gonna leave it for tonight I uh, just put the uh, head cap back on just to keep the dust out uh, but we will be setting the squish um, and probably do doing uh, variator and transmission stuff next time so until next time uh, take care and thanks